Hello, welcome to the TechBits YouTube channel. Whether you are a new subscriber or a returning one, we're happy to have you in this channel. Today's video, we're going to be covering the topic of SQL files. SQL files are used to compact all your commands and queries, or both, in one single file. That way you can leverage them and execute them multiple times. Reusability, that's the whole idea. But it's very little known of what content you can have in these files. To that effect, we're going to be reviewing that and taking advantage of how we can leverage this great feature of PostgreSQL. So first, let's create a file. That's our first order. We're going to call the file mycommands.sql. First item, we're going to connect to the Postgres database. Why? Because we know that that database should exist. If your Postgres installation has been successful and well deployed and installed, you will have this database by default. So that's our first guess and assumption there. Then I'm going to list the databases, whichever how many we have. Followed by, I'm going to list the relations, the tables that are available. Let's stop there. Now, if we look in our psql help, it gives us an idea of all the parameters that we have available for us. So that means we could use minus f or minus minus file in the name we're going to execute. Let's put that to the test. So psql, this is the name of our file. I'm going to indicate minus f. According to the documentation, I'm going to review it once more here, minus f, if that actually works. Okay. Notice it's requesting our response with a colon there. I'm going to click space. It lists all the databases there. And it ended. That means I have to type in or just press the Q. And it continues in the list of our commands. Let's verify what those commands were by follow. Yeah. We connected to the Postgres database, followed by listing all the databases, and then listing all the tables and relations in there. So that was successful. But there's something that's a little bit off there. Notice that we only see the last list of the relationships. Let's see if that can change if we do the following. According to our commands here, minus minus file should also work. Put that to the test. And it continues to work and lists all of our relationships successfully again. Notice that we are missing something. There. Now let's add more contents to our SQL file. What should we add? Well, we already know that there's a departments table. Let's count. And we're going to add a describe the table. So, go to the test. Successful execution. We have the list of databases. We also get the description table. You notice we have the columns correctly indicated, primary key and the constraints. And we get the count as indicated request for the table department. So, far successful. One more item to the test. What if one of the commands we enter is mistaken? I'm going to enter the word gibberish, which of course, it's not a command as we know. Let's execute that. List the databases, get the description of the table, and we get the error. It's indicating on line seven, gibberish. Well, is that true? And yes, that is correct. Now, Going back, we are seeing that whenever we execute, we get, we need a response from the UI. What if we don't want that to happen? What if we want to execute everything in a single pass? Well, let's try this for kicks and see what happened. Do that. I'm telling it psql, take the input from my commands file. Okay, great. It succeeded. But notice the difference. We were not prompted with a, and the colon there. So it all passed correctly. We don't want the error there. Let's remove it and execute it. Success. No errors altogether. Great. What if we wanted to do this with a pipe? Well, cat command and pipe it towards PC. So it's going to list, it's going to take all the content, display the content, and it's going to send it to PC. In conclusion, Let's list how many files we actually used. That's 15. Here we go. This gives us an idea of the commands we utilized in this example. 
So, in summary, there's multiple ways you can execute SQL files, script files, and there's many ways you can leverage them. We have just touched and scratched the surface. Hopefully this comes in handy for you. Let us know if there's any topics you would like us to address. Comments and ideas are suggested and very welcome. Thank you and see you in the next videos.